The world we live in is largely based on image and perception. To get a seat at some tables, you have to appear a certain way and possess certain things. Social media has also made pressure worse by creating ridiculous standards of living. The phrase, don't believe everything you see on the internet, cannot hold water anymore as people will often resort to any means to belong. Fake it till you make it is the order of the day. From the girl who lies about her address to the guy who borrows cars to impress a girl. But is there a way to shift focus away from short-term gratification to long-term growth and personal development? Very well said. The parameters surrounding fake living are broad. There are people who never want to be seen as poor and would fake their wealth. There are also people who never want to be seen as unhappy and would fake their smiles. Then there are people who go into extreme depth or extreme depression in the process of fake living. There are also the masters of fake living who scam and financially cripple thousands of victims through falsified lifestyles. Why is the act of living in a false reality trending today? How has the downturn in the economy caused many to have to keep up appearances in order to survive? Is the culture of falsehood sustainable versus genuine ethical progressive development? Many questions with lots of answers coming up on today's perspectives. To start off, let's watch this brilliant report by iRises Ikena Kingsley. Do stay with us. The era of social media has witnessed the rise of fake lifestyles being put up by individuals in order to appear bigger than what they are. The fake it till you make it syndrome has taken over the internet as people now live in a facade in order to get admiration from people on social media. So, what does fake it till you make it entail? First is to act as if you have what you want or are who you want to be. People who practice manifestation methods like positive affirmations and vision boards see this as a key part of bringing their behavior into alignment with their ideal self. These kinds of visualization techniques are important to success in a number of different fields as it can help you build confidence, identify gaps in your skill sets and give you the courage to take risks that align with big opportunities. Then there are days you have to put on a happy face and pretend that everything is fine. You might be under the weather, distracted by other things or dealing with grief, but come on. We can't let the world see that as people put up the perfect life to cover whatever grief they might be going through. The drawback of pretending that everything is fine creates a lot of emotional pressure as you might be putting on so much energy into keeping up an emotional facade that you don't have much left over for anything else. If there is one thing faking a life does to an individual, is it feeds imposter syndrome. Imposters are people who pretend that they are someone that they are not or that they belong somewhere that they don't. When this syndrome kicks in, you feel like you're faking your success and your qualifications even if you are not. While the phrase fake it till you make it can be helpful, when you need to boost your confidence, it can also be self-defeating. In essence, you are continually affirming that you are fake. This can be especially damaging when you're already struggling with the feeling of unworthiness or doubt that you deserve to be where you are. When you get caught up in imposter syndrome, it can prevent you from taking a critical look at the skills that you need to develop. You may begin to invest lots of energy in avoiding others so you won't be found out. So, when you browse social media and wonder why it seems everyone is living a fantastic life, they are always doing something interesting and you can't help but think to yourself, why is my life so lame and boring? Just remember, your social media status doesn't define who you are. Ikena Kingsley, Arise News. And now we would welcome two people to electrify our group's perspectives on the widespread rise of fake lifestyles. Our first guest is Tunde Rena, the CEO of Evolve Integrated Services. Evolve is a PR agency with a keen focus on the oil and gas sector. Mr. Rena is also an experienced fashion and style analyst. He has worked extensively as a writer, personal shopper, and wardrobe consultant. Welcome, Mr. Rena. 
Thank you very much. And joining Tunde on the panel for us to have a robust conversation is Ifoma Williams, who is so many things rolled into one, an impact oriented business executive, branding and marketing expert, effective communications coach, image consultant, Marshall Cole Smith leadership and executive coach, and international speaker. It's great to have you both here tonight. Thank you. Thank you very so much. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Anyway, as you know, we're talking about uh, life, the fake lifestyles of the, of the supposed rich and famous, which I'm sure everyone... Alleged has, rich and famous. Alleged, <laughs> alleged, right. alleged, alleged rich and famous, you know. And um, what, basically what, what I, I find most amusing or most amazing is the fact, is the extent people go to to give mm -hmm. a certain impression of themselves. Do you understand? Up to when, up to where we live, up to how we, where, where we live, how how we live, what we wear, what we have, what we don't have. You know. So we really want to talk about that. But the underlying factor is that we want to live here, giving inspiration to those who are discouraged by what they perceive mm -hmm. on social media. So that sort of rounding up. It so does. if I'm, let's start with you. Remember okay. before the show started, we were talking about. People who have so many cars, you go yes. into somebody's house and you see about 10, 15, 20 cars and you're thinking, hey, where do I want to even start? Do you understand? But you brought up something that was quite interesting. So maybe you'd like to share that with me. <laughs> I mean, I see that. <laughs> <into birds. laughs> okay, so a, a very good friend. I was admiring somebody's fleet of cars mm -hmm. a few years ago. I think it was about 2018, a few years ago. And um, a male friend of mine said, they're not real. So what do you mean they're not real? He said, do you know what kit cars are? They're wow. kit cars. So these are um, cars that have been assembled, um, have the body of the Bentleys, if you like. Because any brand of car can make a kit car, but is nowhere near the cost of the car. A lot of those kit cars can't even move. But you see photos on social media where X has... A rule six. So why eight. do they want to invest in kit cars? But what what purpose? Purpose? Exactly. How much do they cost? Mm -hmm. I have no idea, mm -hmm. but I know that uh, it's nowhere near the real deal. Um, but as you've said, it gives the impression that this person is a billionaire mm -hmm. in whatever currency who can afford all of these cars. Mm -hmm. You know, to give that, that impression. That's, that is a bit extreme. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is exactly it what is, I'm talking about. Is, how far would you go? What's yes. the extent that you're going to fake until you make it? You yes. know, this applies to hair too. You know, you see some women that would wear hair for three, four, five thousand dollars, or two thousand dollars, or what have you. Yeah. Meanwhile, they are owing the fish seller. <laughs> no, I'm serious. They are owing the fish seller. Mm -hmm. They are owing the. They are owing rent. They can't pay rent. Do you people, understand? People, people throw parties, mm -hmm. big parties, mm -hmm. and um, they borrow money. Mm -hmm. To throw parties. To throw parties. <laughs> they borrow money to throw parties. The next day, they can't pay school fees. Mm. They can't feed. They'll still come knock on your door and ask, mm. look, can I have this? Can I have that? Can I get money to buy this? Can I get money to buy that? Mm. It's sickening. In all honesty, this is a cultural crisis. Yes. But you are, a, you are a, a, a personal shopper. Have you had experiences with any of your clients where they order for things and you maybe order in advance and then they can't pay you back? No, I have not. Um, but have you had any what? situations, awkward situations like that? <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes. There has been an instance where a client ordered for clothes, a lot of clothes. They, they have a child, a son, that... Um, it's copious, it's, it's, it's round, it's big. And um, they needed to make some clothes for him because he had challenges buying clothes off the rack. So I did, and um, it took a long while. At some, time, at some point, I had to let go completely of the money because I, I couldn't bear having to call and call and call and call, same story, oh, later, later. And, the person in question is not just an ordinary person. No, mm -hmm. quote unquote. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So I had to write up that bill. It happens. You've heard of instances too. I'm sure as a woman, you probably would have heard of instances of people who sell jewelry. And I hear sometimes, 
when they open social media, the person is dancing, you know, when adults, that they have, they actually you see, the that they have, they, they bought, but haven't <laughs> paid for, you see them writing. posing in social media, the earrings, the necklace, and, and, you know, and some of these people who sell this jewelry, I've, resort, I've had to resort to going to the husbands of some of these women. But, do you understand? Yes. Um, let's look at it from another, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word, perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that's why we're here. The truth of the matter is that um, at first instance, right, um, image would appear to be everything. I mean, since mm -hmm. the days of John the Baptist, yes. Esther prepared for the king. Um, two psychologists, um, Harry Loft and Joseph Ingham, have said it's the Johari analysis window where they say the first time we have four sides to us, right? Um, your public self, your private self, your blind spot, and your mm -hmm. untapped potential. Mm -hmm. That blind spot is what people see about you that you don't know exists. Mm -hmm. Now, another psychologist, um, Albert Marabian, called it the 93-7 ratio, where he said the first time a person sees you, 55% is what they accord you for your appearance, 38 mm -hmm. for your projection, and only seven for substance. So initially, wow, that's not very and, and if you take no, 55 not. and 38, it's 93. So the truth is, I think it's about, yes, projecting the right image. Yeah. Because if you give the wrong first impression, then it takes 13 further meetings to correct it. So people, 13 further meetings. That's right. And don't forget that the Very human correct. mind is visual. We don't think in letters or alphabets. We think in f pictures. So... Here is me trying to defend mm. people who but are trying so to project. Into exactly. You know, I, I that know that. Branding. I know mm. this. But I'm saying that it's about a delicate balancing act. Mm. And some people have gone overboard. Yeah. Yes. So I'm trying to establish the fact that, indeed, mm. the projection of the right image is important. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. But, 13, but are you saying to me now, if I met you for the first time, for instance, yes. and you left a sort of sour impression, yes. in my, sour taste in my mouth, mm -hmm. I cannot meet you a second time and change my impression about you. I'll be weary. For some people, it's lost forever. Forever. Yes. No, no, but I'm saying if you have the opportunity to not meet the person again, I can't believe, I don't, I, I find it difficult to believe that you have to meet the person at least 13 more times yes. to change yeah, that first where impression that, came from. that you had of the person. Look, look let me, let me, let okay. me help out. Mm -hmm. Look, by the first meeting, if you miss it, most times you're not given this, I mean, second chance. Mm -hmm. If you come and the person meets you, he doesn't want to even spend time with you because mm -hmm. already he has an impression. Mm -hmm. So it has to be true, subtle, sometimes back channels, somebody that he knows that he trusts or he knows that she trusts comes with you or you come through that person and then the ice begins to get broken bit by bit. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Like, just to buttress what she's saying, you see, they say your appearance opens the door for you. Mm -hmm. Your competence keeps you in the room. Precisely. Yes, yeah, precisely, yes. Do you understand? Very correct. You look the part, they will open the door for you, you come in. But if you don't have it, you can't stay. Mm -hmm. Precisely. Let me give an analogy of, you know those uh, uh, beach balls? Mm -hmm. You can hold them underwater for so long. After some time, it pops up. Yes. Okay, so your true color. It comes out. Up. But that's you also, but there's also the part that Ifoma said, your substance is only 7% or so you yes. said. initially. Okay, initially. At first yes. instance. At, okay, at first instance. Okay, so it okay, is okay. your, it is what the eyes feed off on. Exactly. So yeah. it's like this. It goes like this. Okay, I see it's what you mean. It's association. From mm -hmm. association, you build rapport and eventually trust. Okay. So that's what answers your question, which says, if I form the wrong first impression, the next time, believe me, even if you feel the person is different, you're still weary and watching out. Mm. But that sort of branding yes. does not necessarily tie to fake living. So I would see you and I won't say, oh, you are not who I need to talk to just because you don't have Gucci bag with you or you don't have a particular suit. You're not branding because you want people to pull you in because you want to be a part of a certain community. Yes. That's the ones that are living a fake lifestyle. They want to be among and they want to present that, oh, this is who I am. Whereas behind the scenes, they've gone into depth, they are owing people. They have, you know, they've said boyfriends who would say, ah, this is my mansion. But they've begged the gate man there. Oh, it's an empty house. You know, the owner has traveled to say, ah, work with me on this. They've tipped him yeah. and they've taken a girl there just to impress her. That yes. fake lifestyle. Branding is you making use of what you have, what you own, and owning it and being proud and standing upright and say, yes, 
I can do this. I can brand myself confidently, regardless of what I have. But fake living. You know, now <laughs> that you mentioned brand, <laughs> please, mm. what's that? What's that lady that took a picture? There was somebody on social media um, that took a picture. Whatever happened, she took a picture of a house that wasn't hers. She took a picture mm. of her in front of a house that it was hers. That it was hers. Okay. And she kept doing that over and over. Like, oh, it wasn't a one. No, it wasn't a one off thing. Another outfit. Yes. Oh, different, different outfits. Outfit, oh, yes. The same in front oh, wow. of the same And house. then eventually, the owner of the house had to get her arrested. Oh wow! Can you wow. imagine? So it was very, very embarrassing. Strange. She had to come up publicly to apologize. Oh wow! Oh, did she actually admit that? It yes, wasn't her she house. apologized. She was arrested. So, <laughs> it, it's it's that bad. You see, the they say faking it to make it to make it is um, when somebody consciously cultivates, you know. An attitude, feeling, mm -hmm. or impression that you have competence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you don't currently have it, but pretending you do, hoping that it will be. The one I the one I that it would be. Hoping that it would be. So there are two sides to it. There's a bright side of it, like she was saying. Precisely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They say, I I will have to keep going back to clothes because I I I didn't clothes. <laughs> and apparel. <laughs> and apparel. Right? They say. You have to dress the part that you want for the job that you want rather than dress for the job you have. Mm. It sounds good. But at the same time, you see, looking good, mm -hmm. it helps you. It gives you confidence. For sure. Mm -hmm. It gives you confidence. You're not really, it's, it's faking it to make it. Because look at me, for instance, I am here. Mm -hmm. I'm not a public person. I don't talk publicly, but how to, you know, you have to beat, up, beat up myself to say, <laughs> look, you can do this, you can talk in okay. public. It's still the same thing, but on the lighter side. I know what I am going to deliver. I have the, the, the Absolutely. The we're, message. Going to, we're going to break and now. That's key. We're okay. going to break now. That's then key. We'll come back mm -hmm. and discuss this a bit more. Because yes. we're heading for a short break. But stay with us because when we come back, we'll have here with us. You know, we will have here with us the, the same two guests that we have. Mm -hmm. and. We still we'll just iron out a few more We're things. Enjoying our chat before. So welcome back to Perspectives. Now, if I'm, you know, during the break, um, Olatirora mentioned something about branding or no branding. You know, having to look the good, the part. You must carry a designer bag. You must wear designer shoes. Blah blah blah. But if I recall, sometimes you don't even have to be clad in designer wear from head to toe to look smart. Mm -hmm. You can buy a dress for. 50,000 naira or 40,000 naira, a smart black dress, wear yeah, normal smart shoes and, and carry well a bag. Branded. Because after all, isn't it the confidence within that should radiate? If the analysis you gave is anything to go by, yes. the impression that you create and you set the pyramid and what have you. Because if you're starting in life, that's a reason why a lot of girls are in the position that they're in today. You want to start carrying the designer bag from when you're 20. You want to start wearing, carrying a $10,000 bag. You want to wear a $1,000 pair of shoes with False no source of livelihood. Mm -hmm. So how do, you, what, how, do you, how do you address this issue? Okay. So we're, we're speaking about extremes here. Yes. And Torara's point about um, branding yourself differently is different from leading a fake lifestyle. The basis of branding or projecting that fake lifestyle is branding. Mm -hmm. is creating the impression that you want to create. So whilst I agree with you that with little, right, you can project a certain amount of confidence, mm -hmm. I must admit that sadly, sadly, right now in the world today, the perception is that if you look a certain way, yeah. all right, and when people say con artist, I didn't mm -hmm. know until last year that the full meaning of that word is confidence artist. Mm. Okay. That's what a con that. artist con is. Artist. Okay, that's yeah. true. Yes, mm -hmm. So they have confidence. faked that mm -hmm. confidence to, to lure you real. or draw you in. Where the problem now arises is where you cannot carry on consistently. Yes. Mm -hmm. So whilst I agree with you that indeed you can brand yourself for a lot less, as I say, you know, they're, they're foreign brands, but hey, I say... Um, Confidence is not about Gucci head to toe. It's Sometimes about the combination of Gap and Gucci. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's about, about Gap. Yes. Maybe exactly. by the fake Gucci. So you can brand it's about direction. <laughs> <laughs> you fake it till you make it. No, no, but, but, but for me, that thing of wearing fake mm -hmm. is even inner poverty. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. Why don't you yeah, wear the one it is yeah, you can't that you have? One. And according to what you just said, yes. the branding mm -hmm. goes a long way. Whether we like mm -hmm. it or not, it plays a major role. Some people believe that they, they buy the fake ones and then look the part. 
But who are those being oppressed by this thing? Well, however long it takes, because if you're saying it's better, it, it's, it's, you make a better impression yeah. so if you though? wear the fake No, no, I haven't said that too. No, no, no. You said if you wear the branded name, sorry. If you yes. wear the branded names, you make a better impression, whether I would like it or not. But here's the catch. I would rather a gap, if there's any Thank such you. thing, mm -hmm. suit mm -hmm. on Spencer. firm, Max and Spencer, suit on firm, confident shoulders mm. than a Prada suit on droopy shoulders. Yeah, right. but if my hair will wear shake. Oh, oh, you can't oh, tell oh, all no, the time no, no, whether they not, not, not. For sure, for sure, for sure, we can't. But again, as I said, it now comes down to the individual yes. and inner poverty, which over time, mm -hmm. unbeknown to many, creates a, a syndrome called SAD. SAD. Mm -hmm. It stresses you out. It leads you to anxiety because you mm -hmm. are wondering if people can tell whether it's fake or not. And eventually you get depressed. Mm. But they say they even have different categories of fake, grade A, grade B, grade whatever. Mm. They do, but they, it's still, it, it, irrespective of the category, as individuals, what the, the play and oh my the, the, what it does to your mind in the long run is what I don't know if I because find. the amount of people that post this, their fake things on Instagram. <laughs> you can, I have a friend that can tell fake six miles away. I mm -hmm. can't. Really. A lot of people So can. when they oh, post yeah. these things on Instagram and they, they wear this fake shoe and the fake... There's even a, 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 a page where they actually specialize in selling fake goods. And they've had, you know, actresses, popular actresses show their clothes and what oh, have wow. you. So my point is... Instead of carrying that fake Gucci or that fake Prada or whatever, are you not better off carrying a non-designer? Right. Wearing a non-designer outfit mm -hmm. and have the confidence that you said. Exactly. And I think maybe it's industry specific. Maybe it's the entertainment, Hollywood industry. But having that a fake people goods, who are judging other people. Good. So if I see someone, I'm not thinking, oh, because they're wearing Gucci, I'm more receptive of them. Mm. If they wear artwork, if they wear something cute, if they are well dressed, if they are well presentable, I appreciate that more than no, I tend to, designer. I, do I don't look at designer to, things and say, okay, because you're wearing that. designer, I so, appreciate you so, better. But I tend to align. You, give you an audience. Yes, you're of making that. more sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, ideally that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. But I tend to align more. Would not necessarily agree, but align more with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Depending on the industry. No, not so you're a politician. Would you vote for someone who is posting hundred cars? And doing Gucci and traveling oh, so, so to Dubai every other let's week. Put this in and he's a politician let's, 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 let's put it in perspective. Mm -hmm. Whilst I agree with what you are saying, mm -hmm. it boils down to the individual and the mindset. Yes. So the mm -hmm. fact that people, it's a cultural thing, look on certain brands or Packaging, as we call it, which and are drawn, appreciating. Are you drawn? Irrespective of industry. But let me tell you something. Give me an example of someone that you, you of can go to a place. Someone is wearing no, listen, Gucci, yeah. you can go to a place. Preferring and she's that. wearing a nice dress now, for mm -hmm. instance. The first thing I'll probably ask, oh, who's it by? You know, oh, if I like your dress, but who's it by? It's instinctively. That has become the norm. No. It has become now. instinctively. Maybe and we're speaking about, about, about no, not Nigeria. Necessarily parties. Like, for instance, I like the dress you're wearing now. I was probably mm. going to ask you after the show, oh, who is that by? Yes. Then you tell me, oh, yes. it's a Jola Segu, or it's a um, Fantastic, or it's whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, there, you can even carry a nice bag, mm -hmm. or you're wearing a nice pair of pants. There are some people, if it's not a branded name, the minute you say, oh, uh, Max and Spencer or whatever, they'll be like, oh, okay. So I don't care where he bought his shirt from. I don't care where he bought his shirt from. He looks very decent. I'm happy he's on the show. Yeah. You look fantastic. I'm happy you're on the show. You look great. I'm happy you're on the but show. But you know the harsh reality of life. What's the branding that yeah, makes somebody else look yeah, at someone negative? Unfortunately, some people are like that. Some mm. people like branded goods. They would even rather buy this t-shirt you're Give me an example of such a person. No, I mean, I come they're, they're, all the they're all over the place. You can't just keep announcing. But what I'm saying, sorry, is that this t-shirt now could be Prada. And I'm like, oh, I like your T-shirt. Oh, what is it, Prada? And I'm like, oh, nice. Or I could look at this T-shirt and you say, oh, Max and Spencer. Oh, really? Some people just, once you said Max and Spencer, they don't want to know. If some people have that mm. mindset. And you can't, you can't change it. The, the thing is, mm. every single person sees the world through their own eyes. Oh, exactly. And perspective. So you see it this way because it's based on your values. We all give expressions to our values, yes. which have been yes. formed through the years. You mentioned yes. one yes. through your parents. Precisely, you yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the fact that this is what society dictates now does not mean I agree with uh, it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of the times, that's why I give the example that even with all of these, when they're clad from head to toe, you can tell the people who are confident and the people who are not. Mm -hmm. Very correct. But those so are these things are well. 
I think it's a defense oh, mechanism when you are lacking for insecurity. Mm -hmm. So nice. a lot of people mask insecurities with this apparel. Right. Okay. okay. This yeah, is what okay. I believe. It's just that fine line between I like that. faking the brand is what you what know. What are the deliverables? Why do you look the part? Mm -hmm. But do you have the skill set? Is it another thing more sense? important? Do you mm -hmm. remember? Do you guys remember some girl that said um, she spends 1.2 million naira? Skincare for her skin for, for, for her face, skin for her face, for her face. Or something. Wow, well, she must have really every bad month. skin every month. every month. Okay, you remember that? Good I had that story. Now, the reason why that irked me was that what? Who are you trying to impress? What point are you trying to prove? You're a 21 year old, 22 year old girl who entered Big Brother. If you were even doing so well in the first place, you wouldn't even be in this. Goes in the first place. Mm. This goes back to understand? fake products that have damaged people's skin so over this, the years. Yeah, apart now from doing the fake products, but my, my, my anger procedures. with that comment was that this is exactly what will make a lot of girls go to desperate means because, quote unquote, they want to be like this girl who is of spending 1.2 million naira. Meanwhile, what's your, what's your source of livelihood? Mm -hmm. Like you said, if I remember when we were talking about this thing, you were like, even to live through men itself is not easy. Mm. Is hard, hard work is relative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because very relative. relative. It, it is hard work. work. It's, hard work. <laughs> Back. it's hard work. Do you understand? That not disputing. I'm not yes. here to condemn or whatever. No, no. It's, it's not That's my place <laughs> to determine how anybody earns their livelihood. But my, what I cannot stand mm. is don't give the impression that you worked hard for this. Yes, work hard that way but don't give the impression that oh you have a, you earn the kind of income that can exactly. allow you such luxury right and you I tell mean, your this, followers that this is how I made it. And they are now trying to do And then you see these you impressionable did. young people looking at this girl and thinking, oh my God, mm -hmm. what, what am I doing wrong? Oh, why can't I be? Nobody's looking at the long-term trajectory. Oh. Nobody's looking at the long-term goal. You know, for short-term short gratification has far outweighed long-term goals. So I think, and same thing applies to men. Of course. Do you understand? You're not paying school fees at home. Your rent is due. Meanwhile, you're buying the latest shoe, the latest bag, the latest car. <laughs> you know, how do we learn to prioritize? Well, for me personally, um, what I would say, and which is what we try to do, maybe not this particular topic when we're coaching or, or, or teaching, is to just make people see the long-term implications. I mean, there are two points to offer a human being, the pleasure or the pain. But sadly, everyone is tuned in, as I say, into the world's largest radio station, which is WIIFM. What's in it for me? Oh. The question now becomes, what's in it for you when? Now or later? Because if you're not storing up now, then the pain is going to be greater later. But if you are flowing, you know... Pacing yourself. Pacing yourself, that's, mm -hmm. that's it. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And you, you be consistent. Mm -hmm. do, do you see what I mean? And then you don't burden yourself with the stress and the anxiety of faking it or, you know. Mm -hmm. So what I would advise is that we continue to instill these values and make people see reason. Okay. You can force a horse to the river, you can force it to Thank the river. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Very great point.